Hey everybody, uh, Jeremy here. It's uh, Friday night and we're going to create some art. Uh, I hope you guys are looking forward to that. Um, it's been a busy week for me. Uh, I've been all over the place this week, so I'm, I'm happy to finally get a chance to relax and draw some pictures. And um, I, I think we're going to have a fun one tonight. Uh, I was supposed to do live streams earlier in the week. Uh, usually I do them on Monday and Thursdays, but I was a little busy those days uh, with like regular, you know, day job type work. Um, so I'm really looking forward to just hanging out with you guys, uh, chatting with you and, you know, having a drink and uh, enjoying a Friday night. So what are we working on tonight? So I've got a good buddy who lives in the uh, UK and uh, he's an animal lover like me, and he's got a couple of dogs. Um, whereas here in Kentucky, we spend a lot of time with racehorses. Uh, over there, apparently, they spend a lot of time with uh, racing dogs. So he's grown up with, um, or I don't know, grown up. He spent a lot of time with uh, greyhound dogs uh, in the racing industry over there. And um, he's got a puppy of his own. And uh, he asked me if I would uh, draw it for him. And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Uh, I forget what the dog's name is. I don't know if he mentioned it. Let's see if he's in the room. Oh, not spot. Okay. Yeah. So just Dave's in the room. So cool. All right. So we're going to draw not spot tonight, uh, which is a great name for a dog. <laughs> not spot. <laughs> I think I can remember that one. Um, so uh, without further ado, I've got some uh, reference photos here. Um, so the keen eyed observer might notice that this has been photoshopped. You can see um, below the dog, there was a reflection there that's no longer there. Uh, the reason why is because um, uh, Dave uh, takes the dog to the beach and he had a picture of a dog, but it wasn't standing up all regal like, which I thought was a better picture. So he sent me a couple of different pictures. I decided to put them together into Photoshop as a reference photo. Um, and we're going to try to draw this. Uh, I'm not going to lie. It's going to be challenging. There's a lot going on in this picture. Um, some of it I'm comfortable with. Some of, some of it I may not be. Uh, particularly, there's like a lot of detail in the background. I don't know how much of that's going to make it into the photo, I guess, or into the drawing. I guess we'll see. Um, I don't like to put a lot of detail in the background because I feel like it distracts the eye. But finding that balance, I think, to make it uh, convincing without... Uh, overdoing it. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but the biggest thing I think is going to be challenging here is that the dog is kind of small in the composition. So like um, it may be difficult to get some of the facial features in there. We'll uh, we'll have to <laughs> you know see how we do with that. Um, I've, I've already drank a lot of bourbon, so I feel comfortable with my steady hand. <laughs> So when it comes to putting in those small details, we'll just see how it goes. Um, the other um, thing I think is going to be challenging here is uh, a lot of reflections going on. So the dog is standing on the beach and the, you know, the, the waters come in and um, there's a reflection there. And I've never done a reflection, so I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Um, I, I guess I, I'll just figure it out as I go along. Um, I am going to be using pastels tonight. Uh, I debated on what I was going to use. Uh, the options were pastels, uh, watercolor, colored pencils, and charcoal, right? So I've been doing a lot of charcoals lately, uh, and I, I feel like, um, the, you know, Not Spot probably deserves a little bit of color. It's such a beautiful background. Um, it, it just deserves color. So I, I threw that one out. Plus, all of the uh, charcoal pictures I've been doing are kind of like in a... Um, like an expressive style. Uh, I feel like we need to be like a little bit more exact with um, not spot. So charcoal thrown out. Uh, then the options were watercolor, colored pencils or pastels. And I don't feel like my skill set with watercolors is really there. I feel like I need to practice more before I tackle reflections in the water. And so I could probably get, I could probably make those clouds work and I could probably get by with the dog himself. But I'm a little nervous about those reflections in watercolor. I just don't know how to do it. So I need to practice with that more. And I didn't have time this week. I was going to, I was actually going to try that. And then I thought colored pencils might come off looking a little too uh, on the realism side or, well, not really on the realism side, because I hope to do realism in pastels as well. But I thought it might be too refined and too cartoony or something like that. I want this to be like a nice piece that he might hang on his wall. Um, so that one's out as well. Um, uh, pen and ink would have been cool, I guess. Um, but you know, the, there's only so much time in the day. So, uh, the last pen and ink uh, picture I did took like six hours. So I don't, I, 
nope. <laughs> so I'm gonna try this in uh, pastels, which I, I feel comfortable with. I, I feel like we can blend some uh, blend some things, get some decent clouds in there. Uh, on the details on the dog, I think that that might be a little bit challenging, but we'll make do. We'll see how it goes. All right. So here I've already got um, doggo and uh, the background kind of sketched out so that I kept the right perspective and knew where everything was. I actually measured things out so that I wouldn't screw it up because um, Dave uh, deserves a nice picture of his dog. So I didn't want to screw it up. Usually I freehand things and um, you know, like the dog will end up with a gigantic eyeball sticking out or like some ear that's running off somewhere or the clouds will be too big or something like that. So I, I didn't want to do all that. So I, I tried my best here. Um, so I think my strategy here is that I'm just going to jump right into it. And I'm going to try to work from the top down so that I can like rest my hand on the page to like draw and stuff. Um, hopefully we don't have any technical issues tonight. Uh, the last time I streamed, um, had some issues with my camera and also big windstorm here in Kentucky, uh, blew down my fence. Actually, that's what I spent my last Saturday on <laughs> putting up a fence so that my doggos don't run into the neighbor's yard. Um, so hopefully we won't have any of that tonight. Uh, the weather looks pretty clear. Um, it's a little bit on the cold side, but anyway, so I'm just going to jump right in. I'm going to start with the top. Uh, you might notice that I taped the, um, uh, it, it taped it all the way around when I usually just do the corners. Uh, reason why is that this is going to be like an edge to edge picture. So it's going to go like all the way across. Um, and I like to leave a little bit of a, a gap underneath the, uh, the masking tape just so that um, you, you usually use fixant to kind of, uh, when working with pastels or charcoal to keep the, um, all the chalky gunk or like powder or whatever uh, sticking to the page. But um, I still kind of like want to leave like a little bit of a lip there so that, you know, people can handle it without worrying about, you know, touching the chalk or, or the charcoal or something. So I'm going to try to take my time with this. Like you guys have probably seen some of my recent work where I'm just doing this expressive style where I'm just kind of like quickly sketching things and, and uh, just to kind of like have, have like a, a quick work. Um, that's all intentional, right? So like, I'm not trying to be cool by doing something really sketchy, um, sketchy. <laughs> uh, I'm doing that because I want to uh, improve the speed in which I do things. Like usually when I do a color picture, I don't know, it could take up to like two hours or whatever. But my secret ambition is to uh, be a, a live artist where I'm drawing people or horses or just things in public, right? So like, there's a local pub here to, uh, that I went to tonight and, um, or like not tonight, but recently. And um, they have, uh, you know, they have like music and things like that. It's a fun place to hang out. And uh, I want to kind of like, just go there with like a pad of paper and maybe some charcoals or maybe some uh, pastels or watercolor or something like that. And just draw people. I, I think that would be so much fun. So if, if somebody's going to be sitting there while I draw them or certainly a horse, um, I need to be able to be quicker at it. So my charcoal pictures only take like, I don't know, like 30, 45 minutes to an hour. So that's pretty quick, but really if, if I can get it down to like, I don't know, like 30 minutes, that would be ideal. That would be actually super cool. But I, I don't think I'm gonna get there because like, I don't know, it, it depends on how expressive I am with it. Like, we'll, we'll see how that goes. So as you can see, I'm just kind of like adding a little bit of blue with like a little bit of a gradient here. I think I probably need to add some more, but in the um, original picture, it kind of like starts off blue and then it kind of comes down to like a yellow um, on the horizon a bit. I don't know how good I'm gonna do this. I, I really I really want to make those clouds pop with like, like sunshine. Oh, by the way, hi guys. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't acknowledge you guys are in here. How's it? Um, Let's see, okay, uh, Larry's in here, um, Vertigo's in here, and Dave's in here. How are you guys doing? Enjoying your Friday? I always get off on a tangent and forget to acknowledge that people are in here watching. I'm happy to see you guys. Any plans for the weekend? I, um, I know it's probably a week early, but for some reason, uh, my town is having, uh, Lexington, Kentucky is having a, uh, St. Patrick's Day parade. Um, and I always try to go to that, go down there drink some green beer, have a pint of Guinness. 
So that's my plans for the weekend. I'm going to go to that and have a good time. Also, I chose pastels just because I really enjoy working with pastels. And most of the, the stuff I've been doing lately has been that really expressive style. And I wanted to see if I can do a more precise piece. I keep saying precise and watch it come out not looking precise, but <laughs> that's the intent at least. We'll see how it goes. All right, so I do want to get some yellow in there a little bit, just kind of down towards the horizon. And I don't know. Oh, that's a dirty piece of yellow. Problem is, you blend these uh, pieces of charcoal and they get gunk all over them. But blend that out. Yeah, I've been like nonstop making uh, charcoal this week. I don't, I don't know. I'm like just possessed by the charcoal fairy or whatever. I think this needs to be more blue down here. But yeah. Just cranking out those uh, charcoal things. They're a lot of fun, you know? Like, um, I think I started... Well, no, I, I did a test uh, portrait before I did Wednesday Adams, but mostly I started with Wednesday Adams. And um, that went really well. And then I'm like, well, what other fan, picture, uh, fan photos can I do? Um, so I did The Mandalorian, which is a great season, by the way. I think it's turning out really good. This is a Curtis uh, Cruft, Cruft's dog show tomorrow, uh, so she's soundly sleeping. Okay, so also I should mention that um, uh, Dave has mentioned that his dog watches this show. So his dog watches me make uh, pictures. So uh, part of the goal here is to see if Not Spot recognizes himself as I'm drawing him, which would be super cool. All right, so got that going. I think I'm going to, um, uh, I don't know. I don't do many clouds. I mean, you would think that clouds would just be pretty easy in pastels, and they probably are for somebody who's done them more. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the dark, and I'm going to come back with, like, lighter layers over it and kind of smooth it out and see if it forms a cloud. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> I'm sure this will be fine. It may not look exactly like the um, the reference photo, but uh, I think that's okay. I don't know if you guys celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Um, I always try to make an effort. Um, I think somewhere back in the genealogy, well, the last name's Parnell, and that's supposed to be like English-Irish. I know that there was a very famous um, politician named Charles Stewart Parnell. So I think we have some Irish in us, but that's not really why I celebrate St. Patrick's Day. I'm not even Catholic. Um, like, I don't have any problem, anything against Catholics. It's just I'm not one of them. Uh, so for me, it's just it's just a fun holiday, you know? Like, uh, you drink beer, you have a good time. And uh, a lot of other things happen around St. Patrick's Day that, again, are, like, Catholic things that I kind of adopt. Like, um, I don't participate in Lent, but there's a church nearby that has really good, <laughs> like, Fish, like Friday fish, Friday fried fish. And uh, every year for Lent, I go over there and I eat their fried fish. It's the best fried fish. It is, it's awesome. And it's cheap because it's the church. They don't like charge you an arm and a leg. It's only like 10 bucks for like a big old thing of like fried fish. Hey, Ben, how's it going, man? We're, uh, we're, we're drawing um, Just Dave's uh, dog. Uh, not spot. That's what we're doing today. 
And uh, I have high hopes it's going to turn out well, but you guys have seen enough of these to where you know there is no way to predict how it's going to go. It usually works out. I think the most challenging things are going to be this uh, background, but, you know, we can just call it a background and leave it kind of like abstract, I guess. Doesn't have to be perfect. There's not supposed to be a lot of details in it. Yeah, uh, this is a cool dog too. So like, I have never in my life seen a greyhound, much less drew one, right? So like, this is fun for me. It's a greyhound dog. I've never been to a dog race. Well, no, that's not true. I, I went to a wiener dog race. Can you have the DB Cooper? Uh, well, that's this is for Dave. So if you ask him, I can I can draw a little DB Cooper in the background. I am not a, a I'm not afraid of doing that. So I think I'm gonna like try to. Yeah. So I think this is gonna work by combining the uh, stick pastels with the. Uh, pastel pencils. I think I'll be able to get some cloud-like effects going on here. This is fun. You know, if you guys ever had an interest in drawing, you should really take it up. It, it is a lot of fun creating nothing, something out of nothing. I'm going to say nothing out of something. <laughs> I got this really cool Photoshop picture I'm using as a reference, so I'm going to create nothing out of that. I think I really should. So like, um, I should take like this random accidental spot and uh, call it DB Cooper every time. Just be like, you see this little speck right here? That's DB Cooper parachuting in the background. <laughs> I'm, I, I have no problem with that. Who's to say that DB Cooper isn't parachuting on this beach? I don't even know where this beach is. I assume it's over in the UK, but he didn't say. It's, it's probably some famous beach we should all know or something, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm coming back with some white, kind of adding some puffiness to this, these clouds. I actually like these clouds. These look pretty nice. Let's smooth it out around the doggo's head. All right, so I don't feel like I'm done with this side here, but I am going to kind of move on to the side with more color just to kind of get an idea of what I'm dealing with here. So I have some yellows, and I'm going to try to get those in here. This is the side that D.B. Cooper would be on. It's going to... I don't know. I'm just going to put a bunch of yellow over here and try to blend it in, see how that goes. Really, the cool thing about pastels is it's pretty forgiving, you know. Like, if you make a mistake, you can just kind of cover it up. If you don't talk about the mistake, nobody even notices you made it. <laughs> I make all kinds of mistakes you guys don't notice. <laughs> I'm I'm confident that every picture that I have done, there's been some sort of mistake in it. Some I catch, some I don't. Some sometimes people point them out to me, which is kind of cool. Be more appreciative if you point them out to me before I called it done. That's why you guys should watch these live streams. Yeah, I like this uh, reference picture. It's it's a very good picture. Hey, hey, Lorraine, how's it going? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm definitely open to drawing people's dogs. I enjoy doing it. Um, somebody pointed out that I need to draw more cats, though. Like, I, I, there's an overrepresentation of dogs, and cats need to see uh, like some love too. So, somebody's got a cat. Maybe I'll draw a cat next. 
And then I draw a bunch of horses just because I want to get in the habit because there's like a lot of horse shows around here. And then as the artists go to those horse shows. And uh, I think it'd be kind of cool to like, I don't know, draw a bunch of horses and then show up one day with just a bunch of horse art and be like, <laughs> check out what I did. Across, oh, the dog show, yeah. The only dog show I know of is the one that's um, the national dog show they have on Thanksgiving. I watch that every year. I don't know all the other ones. If you guys are familiar with dog shows, I think it's cool that you guys are connecting. Yeah, cats don't care. You could draw a cat like whatever you want, and the cat's going to be like, yeah, whatever, human. You are beneath me. Like, you screwed that up. <laughs> Freaking cats. For the record, I did draw a cat. I draw I drew a cat as Loki. A Loki variant. Oh, I'm so looking forward to that. I think that comes out later this year or maybe early next year. I don't know which, but I know that Ant Man's not doing very well from like a critic standpoint. But um I like Kang as a uh, villain. Is that a spoiler? Nah, everybody knows that Kang's the villain. Um, and he was introduced in um, Loki, so I think it's going to be cool. I am interested in seeing how that story goes. Um, I think I might need to sharpen this. Hold on one second. Let's see what we here. I love how much of a mess I got going on here. All my other ones, except for the live ones, I kind of try to clean up after myself. I'm like, so there's like some purple in these clouds as well. So, I don't know. I don't think it's going to be perfectly like the reference photo, but I want to capture the elements of it at least. So, you know, like a sunset in the sky. There's like a little pier over here or some kind of barrier. I don't know. Maybe uh, Dave might be able to enlighten us on what that is, but I'm, I'm going to call it a pier. Um, I'm going to pretend like Dave's not here and I'm going to tell you the secret. The secret is to find one thing like that that is instantly recognizable in the environment. And if you put that in, it convinces people that it's the right lo location. It doesn't matter if you get the clouds right. It doesn't matter if you get the beach right or whatever. If people see something that's familiar to them, they're going to be like, yep, that's the place. I'm treating Just Dave as like kind of a client here, even though it's just, it's just a fun picture I'm doing for him. But... I'm giving away my client secrets. All you artists should not go on a live stream and tell people what your secrets are. Oh, okay. Yeah, I couldn't tell if it was a pier or some sort of water break. It looks like it extends out across the horizon as well. So it's like there's this big barrier here, and then it goes along the horizon. It, it looks like a cool place. Like, I would love to visit this place. You can see I'm being super technical here with my scribbles. So I think the... I'm going to call this, what, what color is this? Violet. This violet cover, a color kind of heads up into near where the doggo is. I'm going to blend that in a little bit. Um, somebody asked me today if I could do, oh, this is a Norfolk? Neat. Um, somebody asked me today if I could do like live stream from like a location, like could, can I travel to some location and do a live stream? I think that would be awesome. I think I can. Um, if uh, the 
internet on my phone can be tethered to my laptop and it'd be enough to support a stream. I'm going to try that. Because like I said, I think it'd be fun to like, I don't know, live stream from the pub while I'm drawing. You can see I really just want to go to the pub. <laughs> but nah, that'd be cool. You know, live streaming from the pub. I think it's going to be a little while before I have the courage to draw somebody live while I'm sitting at the pub, but you know, I can draw other things while I'm sitting there. I think it would be awesome to draw people. I just think that uh, it's going to be a while before I feel like, because like drawing a live subject is a totally different beast. Um, for those of you guys who do draw, you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's, it's a whole nother ball game. Um, because people move and there's a, there's like a lot of tips and tricks to getting proportions, right? Um, one of the reasons why I've been doing a lot of like freehand work lately is not because it's easy. It's not, it's very hard. Um, it's very hard to get people, especially people's face, facial features, um, and, you know, capture, capture their, uh, essence. <laughs> I'm not a vampire, um, capture their, uh, Likeness, that, that's the word, yeah, capture their likeness. So, <laughs> capture their essence. I want to steal their soul. Um, no, it's like, uh, it, it, it's very hard to freehand and capture somebody's likeness. Um, even even like master uh, drawers and painters and stuff that have a lot of experience in it uh, struggle with it sometimes. So that's why I've been practicing that. That said, it's, it's not, it doesn't need to be that hard. Like you can, there's a lot of tips and tricks for getting the proportions right, measuring, things like that. Um, they're just not practical when you're doing something live. Now, there are some tips to doing like, um, um, sorry, I'm getting distracted here. There, there are some tips to uh, doing like live measurements and stuff like that as well. And I, I'm trying to learn those. They're, you know, like the whole holding your thumb up and, you know, measuring off of that, um, some people hold a uh, stick. So like I can hold this stick here, measure, okay, from the top of the dog's head down to the base of his stomach, it's yay big. And then I can go over here and be like, okay, on my drawing, most people don't draw with like an overhead camera. They have like an easel. So they can say, okay, from the top of the dog's head to the bottom of it, and then draw that way, right? So like you can do that if you're drawing like a, a live subject. But I'm not there yet, and I feel like it'll take a little while before I get to there. All right, so I'm sort of happy with how that's turning out. Um, I feel like I need some more gray on this side. Let's see if I can, whoa, that's like deep gray. I don't want that, well, okay, maybe a little bit goes a long way. Need to be careful with this gray. So obviously I'm not trying to be completely precise with these uh, clouds. I'm just trying to give like an essence of a cloud-like environment. Yeah, I'm going with that. So I'm not like, I'm not like drawing every single puff of cloud that I see. I'm just trying to get an impression of clouds. Yeah, like we're, we're a half hour in and I've only done the clouds. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Well, no, a lot of that was talking. Yeah. Be nice to yourself, Jeremy. Um, Dave, uh, I'm going to call you Just Dave. That's who I know you by, but even though your name is Dave. Um, Just Dave. Uh, rest assured, even if I don't finish this tonight, I'll get it finished up. Send out to you. This is my first uh, international exhibit. <laughs> I'm going to go with that. I'm going to call that an international exhibit. Or international commission. Well, I don't know. I assume he's going to hang it somewhere. That's an exhibit. It's an international exhibit. All right. I feel like um, I feel like got enough of the clouds there that I can always come back and tinker with it a little bit more later. Um, I'm going to move on to another area just so that 
we can show some progress. Yeah, I don't know why they're doing like a St. Patrick's Day festival this weekend. I feel like it should be next weekend. So this is why I did the cloud first because like, I don't know, when dealing like with precision or whatever, I need to like rest my hand on something. And it's always awkward when I'm working with a camera directly overhead. First off, I think I think having a camera overhead, I really need like an easel propped up. I feel like it messes with my perspective. Like I've been looking at some of the portraits I've been doing and um, they're not perfect on um, on the proportions. And <laughs> I'm going to blame the, the, uh, the fact that I draw them from an angle, even though it's just really, I don't have the skill to do it, but um, I'm going to pretend like I, I do, and it's not my fault. Like, I, right now, this is awkward. How do I, how do I put my hand? I'm going to rest my elbow on this thing here. But, yeah, so... It is better to like actually use an easel for for this kind of stuff. I don't know. But that's okay. I think at some point I'm gonna have uh gonna have a guest come in and hang out with us sometime. That'd be kind of cool. Like, even though I'm drawing, I always find it awkward when I don't have anything to say. Yeah, I feel like dead air is okay, but it's kind of weird. Yeah, dead air is fine in an art show. See, what can I use to blend that and lighten it up? I don't want to use white. Well, maybe white would work. Nah, I think it's actually just black. Gray? Yeah, let me try gray. Problem is, I don't have all the right colors for things that I see here. I need a different shade of brown. It's kind of like a gray brown. Oh, I, I I had this really humbling experience today. Um, that I figure I'll share with you guys. Why not? So one of my things is I don't have a huge budget for art supplies. Um, I'm currently like trying to uh, do like a, a software startup. Um, so I watch every single dollar I spend, and um, I don't uh, I don't want to just kind of like waste money. So. I'm trying to make do with like the art supplies I do have. So one of my things that um, <laughs> that I complain about is like, oh, I'd be a, such a better artist if I can get the right supplies, right? Um, that's what I tell myself. If I just had the right supplies. So I was looking at a set of uh, watercolors and I'm like, or not, not watercolors, sorry, acrylics. I was like, it's because I wanted to try painting uh, with something other than watercolor. And I'm like, you know, I should I should try to do uh, acrylics, um, maybe not even oils. Just start with acrylics because, like, honestly, I I haven't ever really painted before, so I don't I don't know how that'll go. But anyway, I wanted to practice, so I'm like, man, it costs a fortune to get all the different colors that you might need for, um, like all these acrylics, right? So like, you can get a base set fairly inexpensively, but then it's like, well, I want this color and I want this color, and it starts adding up. And it's like a couple of uh, dollars per bottle, right? And I'm like, if I could just have all those colors, I would start doing acrylics, and I bet you I'd be really good at it. It never crosses my mind that I would be bad at it, right? <laughs> like, I'm a, um, let's see, they criticize millennials uh, for thinking this way, and maybe I'm on the upper side of uh, the millennial age bracket, but I feel like I've got a lot of the same tendencies is like 
the whole can do attitude like um i can do anything if i set my mind to it um uh, but anyway so like um it never occurred to me that i can't paint in acrylics i i think i would be amazing at painting in acrylics to me it's just i don't have the right supplies right so um anyway so man this story is going on and on uh so anyway i'm like um well if i just had the right supplies so anyway, I was watching a tutorial of somebody who does paint in acrylics, and I'm like, well, okay, maybe I can do something like him. Um, so I saw a, a video for it, and I'm like, I'm going to watch this video. And uh, uh, the guy, so my, my complaint is that I would have to spend all this money on all the different colors in existence to be, uh, to be able to even possibly even do acrylics to the skill level that I think I would be good at acrylics, which is, I would be awesome, of course um but i just need all of these different uh paints so anyway i come across this video and this guy literally had the major primary colors right so you, he had the red he had the blue uh he had the yellow and that's it like maybe he had green i don't know but this guy took those primary colors just like a set of like i don't know four or five i i, I didn't count and he just took those and he mixed them and he recreated this like amazing renaissance style painting like spot on like if it was in a museum i would believe it and all he did was take these these cheap basic colors and mix them together and here i am complaining that oh i can't be an acrylic artist until i get all the different colors i i don't know i don't know it was very humbling though because there are some people out there who are really really good at art and um it's probably because they've devoted their lives to it. Uh, haven't spent what two months on it like I have been. Anyway, long story short, all you really need is just a set of cheap paints, and you can mix colors. That's what I was getting at. So I'm gonna try that <laughs> because I'd be amazing at it, right? I'm just gonna go off and get some uh, some cheap uh, acrylic paints, and I'm gonna try to mix colors. And I have no doubt in my mind, I'm just going to be able to do it. It's not going to be hard at all. It's going to be super easy, barely an inconvenience. All right, so this is where it gets difficult because we've got reflections going on from the clouds in here, along with waves. Let me try to pull all this down. I, I feel like Bob Ross would just knock this shit out. Be like really easy for him. So I'm gonna gonna start with some scrapes of color across like that, and then rather uh, I'm gonna blend it. Yeah, yeah, this will work. This it'll be fine, guys. Hey, thanks, Ryan. Um, Ryan was the one who suggested that maybe I go to like um a, like on a hike or something. I don't know what he had in mind, but going someplace and doing a live stream from like maybe out in the woods or something. I think that'd be awesome. That is definitely on my wish list, uh, especially as it gets warmer. I do like to go hiking. I go kayaking a lot. I go to horse shows. Um. It would be a lot of fun. This sucks. How do I do this? Okay, so where the yellow is, it's not blue. It's kind of like this violet color. So I'm going to try to put in some lines of violet. I'm glad that you guys are having a conversation about dog shows. That's cool. I need to get somebody to um, have me do their horse. That would be cool. Um, some of my friends watch this from time to time. Just zoom in. Yeah, like have, have been talking in the back. That's, that's not going to be hard. <laughs> he will definitely fill the air. That's funny. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know Ben, um, because I have been picking up a few subscribers lately off my shorts, um 
He's a friend of mine who just likes to to chat and chat and chat, mostly about conspiracy theories, mostly about like treasure hunting, things like that. I think it would be fun to do a um like a treasure inspired drawing. Maybe like the same beach scene, but there's like a treasure chest being hidden. That'd be cool. And then invite Ben on here to talk about treasures in general. I don't know what else he does, but that's kind of what he does in his life. He goes looking for treasures. His show is called uh, Treasure Warriors. If um, if you guys aren't familiar with it, definitely check it out. I'm acting like there's more people in here than the usual group. Camel racing. Have you guys ever seen a wiener dog race? It is the most hilarious thing. Wiener dog races are the best. They have one at the um the horse track around here during the summer. And what they do is they have like all the dogs at one end, all the owners at the other end. And the owners are allowed to use like whatever device, like their favorite toy or just calling them or whatever uh, to get them to run over to them. And whoever gets there first wins naturally. Uh, so it sounds it sounds cute, right? Uh, it is pure mayhem. It is crazy. So they let the dogs loose, and the dogs just run wherever they want to run. Um, there was a dog uh, two years back ran the entire length of the horse track, not just like a little bit, like all the way around the back. It was nuts. It was funny. All right, so instead of using a pencil, I'm going to try to Fill in some of this stuff down here. We haven't even gotten to the dog yet. <laughs> I'm still doing background. <laughs> That's the problem with colored pictures. That's why I do charcoal. If you want your portrait done in 45 minutes or less, it can be in black and white, but in, like, because that's that's the quick way. don't have to worry about matching colors or anything like that. You just have to worry about values. This area is dark. This area is light. This area is lighter than the other part. That's also light. Values. Honestly, if you, if you are a, a new artist starting out or just like trying to learn, that's probably the, the number one thing you can learn is uh, practicing values. So like you might see me just doing crazy stuff in my charcoal pictures, but there's a method to my madness. I'm actually trying to learn how to shade things better, how to create depth in a picture and, and so on. It's a, it's a calculated, that's a good way to put it. So there's kind of like a little rift in the waves here. Make sure I want to get that in there before I lose it. So there's like a lot of other colors in here too. Like there's some greens up on the horizon. So it looks like it's all blue reflecting the sky down. But then as you get further back, it's it's kind of more greenish. So I didn't want to like forget to add that. I had this, what color is this? Turquoise green. I put some of that in there as well. Think about adding color is fun, you know, you get to mix all these different colors together. All right, so I'm going to just fill in a bunch of stuff so that I can blend it. And make some progress. The rest of my picture disappeared for a second. Here we go. It's kind of a pretty color. Looks a little bit like a beach. 
come back and add more detail later on. Get some nice white reflection going as well. All right, I'm gonna move on to this side and then I'm going to start on the dog. Um, don't get too focused on um, uh, some of the things like, you know, like that just being regular brown. I don't know, I, I, may, I may add more details as I go along. I don't really know. There's a certain point where I work on a picture and I'm like, eh, that's good enough. Um, call it boredom, <laughs> call it, like just like artistic intuition or whatever you want to call it but there is a point where i'm like well all right i think i've done enough and uh i call it done so don't get focused on anything because like even after like oftentimes so i have a little confession oftentimes after i uh i call the stream ended and i say i'm done with something or i say oh that looks perfect i'll turn the camera off and i'll be looking at it and i'll be like oh man i forgot to add this or i forgot to do this and um, I'll add like little tiny details and stuff before I take a photo and post it. Or sometimes even after I've posted a photo, I'll be like, oh man, I could do this part better or something like that. So I do tinker with some of these things when you guys aren't looking is what I'm saying. Like just because the stream ended doesn't mean I ended. Um, I haven't pulled one. So I've got all these pictures pictures on the wall it's kind of like i don't know like most of the pictures that not all the pictures i've done um some of them i've i've given away some of them um so i, I still have like wednesday adams up on the shelf or something i haven't hung her up uh but i've got all these uh these pictures on the wall so i'll actually go over there and i'll look at those and i'll be like especially the early ones i'm like oh man i totally screwed that up or this could have been so much better it's basically like <laughs> I don't know. I stare at the wall and I'm like, man, you suck, Jeremy. You could do so much better. Um, no, it's not like it's not like that. But uh, yeah, I'll go over there and I'll look for like little places I could have improved, little things that I could have done differently. And then they don't always make it into like new pictures, but some of them do. Like I feel like I feel like I have learned some lessons that I do actually. Um, do enough to where I would call it like habit. Like I've picked up some things that I feel like, I don't know, I call it like leveling up, right? So I, I have leveled up as an artist. I still feel uncomfortable with that word artist because I feel like that applies to somebody who is actually good and spends, doesn't just get lucky. Like, I feel like, um, I will be comfortable calling myself an artist only after I feel like I can create something with consistency and not just um not just you know getting lucky that something turned out not horrible. <laughs> Cuz I feel like all, all of my success stories are that I just got lucky. Like if this picture turns out well, it's not because I don't have any skill. It's just, I got lucky. And then my bad pictures, of course, I don't blame those on myself. I say, I got unlucky. It's not because I lack skill. It's just because I'm unlucky that the picture turned out like crap. Man, there's a lot of freaking water here. And I said I was going to start on the dog, but I kind of want to get all this water in and then this isn't even all the water there's like reflected water down here but I'm going to come back to do that because I have to start with like a sand color down here and then move up but I again I want to give myself <clears throat> some space to uh, rest my hand and, and so on because I don't have an easel and I don't have any way of uh, you know showing a camera on an easel in this particular space maybe that'll change in the future maybe I'll uh, I don't know 
get a proper studio instead of just doing this out of the same office that I do all my computer work with. All right, so that's good enough, right? It looks like um, a bit of a smudgy beach, it seems. Um, definitely some areas where I can touch it up, which I plan to do. I'll come back to it. But I did want to get started on the dog. Um, really, you know, we're not even an hour into this. so There's not a lot of dog here, actually, because of his placement in this. Um, he doesn't take up, take up a lot of the picture. So hopefully this won't be too troublesome. Especially after drinking some bourbon. Bourbon makes my hands steady. <laughs> So as always, I wanted to take a moment, appreciate you guys for uh, uh, watching this. I know that you guys have a lot of options and what you could be doing on a Friday night. I appreciate that you guys spend time with me. Hopefully you guys are enjoying yourself. And um, if you're not an artist and this isn't inspiring to you, hopefully, uh, hopefully you just enjoy it. Like the Part of my goal is to just kind of create this like relaxing kind of area where people can, especially on a Friday, come in after a hard week and just relax, chill, have some conversations with people that are friendly to them and so on. Um, hopefully you guys get that vibe from watching this. If not, sorry. <laughs> but that was, that's the intent. This is practically charcoal. Sorry, I've been using charcoal so much, I don't even know it's the difference. So these are pastel pencils, by the way. Um, yeah, exactly, kid. Uh, I feel like I feel like I'm getting better by practicing all the time. At least I, I'm learning how to fix mistakes as I encounter them. I don't know if I'm getting better at not making mistakes, but... I am able to recognize them quicker. And um yeah, it's just just practice. Wait a minute. Just as the practice of dentist dentistry, you're always practicing. So I don't want a dentist practicing on me. <laughs> like <laughs> like I was just thinking about if I screw up a picture, I can just throw it away. Um start a new one. I don't want no dentist practicing on me. I want him to come uh like already knowing what he's doing. That's a that's a scary thought. I mean, I guess that's what they're doing, but I don't want to be their tech subject. That's funny. I never even considered that before. Is this dentist just practicing on me? I need to schedule a dentist appointment. It's been a little while. Here in Kentucky, we're not exactly uh, known for going to the dentist all the time, you know? I feel like I go more than some of my peers. I like to take care of my teeth. I don't know how we got on the subject of teeth, but uh, I had braces growing up, so those were expensive. My parents paid a lot of money for them, so I, as an adult, I tried to take care of my teeth just to, to not waste that money that they spent. I don't even know what it costs for braces now. I assume it's a, like arm and leg. Um, I'm going to use this blend tool that I've been using for charcoal just because looking at this pastel. By the way, uh, I started explaining what I'm using here. These are pastel pencils. So you have a couple of different versions of pastel. Uh, you have the sticks and you have these pencils and then... You have these really soft ones that I've been using as well. I don't think I need them in this picture, but these are from a company called Rembrandt. And um, I got these as a set for like Christmas or something at some point. And these are super nice. They're like super soft. Like if I just run my finger over it, the chalk comes right off. That's a, they're they're called soft pastels, and they're the they're the best. They're they're my favorite, but. They're kind of overkill for detailed work like this. Plus, they're, you saw how bulky they are. You can't really get... I mean, you can, but you have to be careful with them. 
And uh, I know I know the doggos are coming out gray, but I'll darken them up. Anyway, uh, those are the best pencils, but I feel like sometimes they call well, a lot of people call pastel drawings pastel paintings, and the reason why is because you are layering uh, with them. I feel like these harder pastels, so these are like a relatively hard pastel, and say it's so. I, I don't recall pastel pencils being this hard. I think that it's the uh, cheap set that I got. Um, but they're like super hard as well. The soft pastels are really great for layering. So like you would use like these hard pastels, like a underlayment base painting. I don't know what the term is. Um, you would use them first and then Oh, you were a dental assistant for 30 years? Okay, so that makes sense. So, like, basically, you practice on human beings for 30 years. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. It is a terrifying thought to think that the dentist is uh, just practicing. Oh, come on in, uh, Jeremy. Uh, we'll get you fixed up. I, I, I need the practice. <laughs> what? Don't be practicing on me. You're supposed to know what you're doing already. Didn't you go to school? I feel like you should have done all your practicing on, uh, I don't know, like clay models or something. And sometimes they take those casts of uh, people's teeth, but practice on that. I'll be practicing on, on me while I'm sitting in the chair, scared to death. I'm just, I'm, I'm really just joking. I'm sure that most dentists are really good at what they do. Hopefully my dentist is. So I'm putting a lot of black in here, but also I do know that there's like a, like a little bit of reflected blue. I'm going to try to get that in there as well. Um, I'm going to use, just for this big area, I'm just going to use this bigger piece. So this is what I'm talking about. So like, eh, it's kind of hard to see. So it's just like a big chunk and you wouldn't really want to use these for details unless you're like being super careful because they are so thick now you can sharpen them and stuff but most people don't do it they just kind of carefully just make mark really paintings are meant to be seen from a distance anyway you're not really supposed to get super close to them or at least most people don't um so i need to blend that do i have a blending tool for that yeah where did that here it is yeah see that being a softer pastel you see how dark it is, right? It's kind of like those pencils you buy. So, like, the softer the pencil, the darker the uh, mark is going to be. And the harder the pencil, the lighter. Yeah, screw that up. And the, uh, it, yeah, so, like, harder the pencil is, the lighter it's going to be. It's the same thing with these pastels. So, if I want something to be super dark, I'll go over and grab one of those uh, sticks. So I did kind of trying to be super precise here. I'm going to use my little kneaded eraser to try to erase that mark. No, well, they're coming up. No, well, let's just blend it in. It's kind of his uh. That's fine. It's all good. Happy imperfections. All right, so we've got a good base coat going. Going. So let me um, let me go ahead and add base coats to the other dark areas, and then we'll tinker with maybe doing some highlights after we get all that. Again, one of the issues with this composition that I bit myself in the foot is um, not a lot of room for details because. Doggy is kind of small in the picture. What I probably should have done is used a bigger paper. This is um just a little bit larger than eight by eight and a half by eleven. You know your standard paper. I don't know. Let's see, yeah, it's not made well, so it's it's kind of small. You probably shouldn't do that if you're doing like a landscape with a dog in it. 
It's uh, one of those things that uh, an experienced artist would have thought about. Right. It'll be fine. We'll make it work. I ain't worried. I'm not worried. Uh, it's not like uh, I've done pictures before where I was so happy with them that, uh, or unhappy with them actually. Um, it's not like I haven't had pictures like that where I was so unhappy with them that I just gave up on it, threw it to the side, and decided I would try this again with it. Like I have done Indiana Jones how many times? Like if you guys are keeping track, I've done them at least twice. And I'm still not happy with what the result. The uh, last one, his um, his facial features don't really look like. Well, it looks more like Harrison Ford than the first attempt, but it definitely needs some work. And then the hat. Please don't go and look. Uh, I only keep these videos up because like there's like a certain watch hour requirement, and I don't want to delete them. But I don't like it. It's not my best work. I like the markings on a knot spot. He's got these cool little markings. So I think this part comes up around the neck. And then he's got like a collar here. I may have to sharpen this pencil. Like it looks fine on camera, but here in person, Definitely need to uh, sharpen this to get some details in there. What's it like being a dental assistant? It seems like that would be super stressful. Because if I screw up, I just throw the piece of paper away. You guys literally have to uh, be really good at what you do. Seems like that'd be a lot of stress. Um, my other job is uh, writing software. And... Uh, thing about software is it never is perfect you're supposed to like start with something and then add to it it's called uh the minimal viable product right so like you, you build off of uh things incrementally which is great that's i actually think that that's a good life philosophy is like just start start right just start doing something and then add to it refine it and so on over time um, for those of you guys who are aspiring artists, you can see easily how that applies to art. Um, you start with a picture, it looks kind of smudgy, doesn't look nice, you refine it. I think that's a great way to live your life as well. Um, I haven't mentioned it in a while, but this whole show started as a New Year's resolution to uh, just be more creative this year. Jeez, that's a super long tail. Look at this tail. That is like, I didn't know, that, that's crazy. Sorry, I get distracted. Um, anyway, this show started as a New Year's resolution where I wanted to uh, practice creativity. And, and the thing is, you know, there was a lot of barriers. I didn't have all the uh, equipment. Um, I didn't have a, like a camera. I didn't have all the different things that I needed to really do it right. And I still don't. There's a lot of missing. But the idea is... Uh, you know, you start, right? It doesn't matter if you're uh, doing everything perfect. I'm, I'm certainly not. Uh, but I am doing something, right? And I, I again, you know, I, I've already mentioned it, but I'm going to mention it again. I think that's a great way to live your life. You know, you just do something. It's not going to be perfect. It's not meant to be perfect. It's meant to be refined over time. So, you know. I don't know why, but I was thinking of houses, right? So you don't start off with your mansion or your dream home. You start off with an apartment, right? That's your minimal viable product. And then you're like, oh, you know what? I've kind of outgrown this apartment. I'm going to I'm gonna get something a little bit larger. Maybe I have a family now. Maybe I have some dogs. Uh, can't have dogs in an apartment all that easily. They need room to run around. And But you have to start somewhere. 
So you start with an apartment, and then, you know, you build up to a house, and then you may start a home at, or whatever, and then you build up to, you know, your dream home someday. I think that's a great way to live your life. Certainly how I try to live mine. I'm not a perfectionist, but I do have those kind of like tendencies to where I stress about things like, am I getting it right and everything? But it really is not like on my best days, I come back and I remind myself that it really doesn't matter that things aren't perfect now. You have plenty of time to fix things, get better at it and so on. Like it's awesome. Like it's actually awesome that I only have like a certain number of subscribers. Now I get to practice and and, and you know like improve my skill. If I had a you know a gazillion subscribers or whatever, a gazillion people watching this thing, I would be so self conscious. I'd be like, oh no, I've ruined this p picture that thousands of people are watching. Nobody wants that kind of stress. They use the tail to balance while running like a cheetah. Okay, that makes sense. It's just the longest tail I've ever seen. I have never seen a doggo with that kind of tail. That's like, that's as long as a leg. Look at that. That's ridiculous. Dogs don't need that kind of tail. Are, um, are greyhounds like uh, always known for running? Like were they ever any other kind of dog? Like, I don't know, dogs are bred for different tasks. Were they were they specifically bred to race or run or be cheetahs? I feel like I'm actually learning stuff on this show. Like it's a pretty dog. I like how sleek they are. I think Santa's little helper from the uh, The Simpsons was a greyhound too, but it's it's like a brown one. I didn't know they actually came in different colors, to be honest. <laughs> For some reason, in my mind, my stupid little Jeremy mind, I thought all greyhounds were gray. <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> yeah, hunting dogs, that makes sense. Hey Q, how's it going? I'm not just doing art. I am doing Just Dave's Doggo. This is a special, like, community type thing. We're all, like, working on this thing here together or something. I don't know where I'm going with that. Anyway, it's one of our own. Yeah, it's not like I'm just doing some random picture. This is for Just Dave, who's awesome. We all know Just Dave. I'm just using some of that black that's still on this uh, smudge stick to kind of come back here and add some shading, I guess. All right. So I feel like enough of the dog is there to where I can come back and add some, like, some highlights to the dog, maybe some more detail, and so on. But before I do that, I kind of want to make some progress on this foreground, at least on this side, uh, just to make sure I have my colors right, which is kind of a guess. Um, because it basically all blends together, so I want to just kind of get some beach going here. And it's not the exact color I want, but I feel like I can blend some colors together and maybe get something that resembles a beach. How are we doing on time? This might be something that I have to continue um, over it. Like, it, it may be something that I don't get to finish tonight just because, like, it's such a lot going on in this picture. Like, we, we still have plenty of time, at least in my mind. Um, but I just noticed that there's a lot of white left on the page. <laughs> So like I said, it is a lot like painting where you um, 
you come in here and you add kind of like a base layer. You guys have seen some of these pictures. And then you come over it with some more colors, kind of smooth it out. Raise the layers a little bit. I'm just doing this one side for now just to kind of get an idea of where I'm going with these colors. And then if I like what I'm doing, I, I'll remember what I'm doing and increase it across the page. So this speech is actually pretty smooth. So the first thing I need to do is get rid of all of that graininess. I, I could probably have done this in watercolor to be honest. I get um, I get worried that things aren't going to look right, and um, truthfully, it's, it's all six of one, half a dozen of another. Like you use pastels, you use watercolor. It's just going to change a few small details. It's not going to it's not going to change the composition. Composition is going to be the same. So I got these little guidelines in here to remind me that there's like suds. I don't know what they're called. Um, on the beach as well. And I'm, I'm just going to draw over them because I kind of know that I have to come back and add some of that kind of stuff. So there's really no point in having them there because like I know... I know that because this is already detailed, that's where the water stops. Well, where there's a, like a rift across, and then it's all suds from there. I need some more bourbon. It's just kind of weird blending these things. So, like, you've got, got like a lot of whites through here. You've got some browns. But then this is also kind of bluish through there. And I don't really have the right blue. I need kind of like a bluish gray. So let me see if I add blue over that brown, what that does. Yeah, that kind of comes, yeah, yeah, that's what I need. I don't need blue gray, I need brown gray. Still off a little bit, but that's okay. I can. As long as it looks like the beach, right? I'm hoping just it doesn't care. I'm gonna say the client the client doesn't care. Oh, I thought you were talking about the blue gray of the, the sand. Uh, okay, you're talking about the dog, yeah. Okay, now I gotta remember what I did to make that so that I can make it consistent across the page. Also, I need to reflect the dog somehow. I don't know how I'm gonna do that, to be honest. <laughs> I'm going to put the sand down and then hopefully you guys will remind me that the dog needs to be reflected in it. Because at this point, I think that the dog reflection needs to go over the sand and then be blended out. That's my strategy. That's what I'm going to go with. Um, for those of you aspiring artists, a lot of art is just you know, kind of thinking through things and, and um, that's one of the fun things about it, you know, and one of the, um, one of the reasons why I recommend it, even if you're not a uh, particularly skilled artist uh, and you're just trying to like learn or whatever, or if you're just, you know, you got the free time or whatever, and you're just thinking like, uh, do I want to take up art? Um, yeah. Anybody can learn art, right? So, like, your style is going to be different than other people's style. Um, you can beat yourself up that it's not ultra-realistic or anything like that. I don't really go for realism myself anyway. Um, but even, even like, a slight bit of uh, artistic skill will get you by. Or just creativity, you know, like a sense of creativity will get you by. It doesn't have to be, like, art skill, whatever that is. Um, what was my point? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the reason why <laughs> the reason why I recommend it is it's 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 fun and it's super relaxing and it could be frustrating at times, sure. But um, the cool thing about it is it teaches you so many other skills that you can use in life. Right. So while I'm not a professional artist and I don't spend all my time doing this stuff, well, lately I have been, but 
um, traditionally. I don't spend all my time doing this stuff. It's still, you know, giving me some skills that I can apply to other areas of my life. And one of them is problem solving. So here it is. I try, I test something to see if I like it. I'm happy with it. Um, you know, the question is, how do I make this water transition into a beach? And, uh, you know, it's not perfect yet. I'm still working on it, but I, you know, put some thought into it and solve that problem. That's the benefit of art. You get to, you get to think in new and interesting and creative ways. That's the whole point. And, uh, that kind of skill or acquired, um, Acquired skill is something that you can apply to other areas of your life, you know. It's a it's a nice meditative tool for problem solving. Um, I am not Buddhist, but I do appreciate some of their ways of thinking. And um, one of the things that they do in Zen is just practice the same thing over and over again repetitively and through that they kind of like that that's a form of meditation like um one example that i remember i forget what documentary i saw it in uh just you know like washing the washing the uh deck or washing the um the porch or something on, on like a temple they'll they'll just wash it very carefully and exactly like I don't, I don't know how to describe it, but it's it's not like they're doing it to be super efficient. They take forever doing it. But it's that whole thing where you're just kind of like in the zone, you know? You're like, this is what I'm doing. I'm cleaning the deck, and I'm being very meticulous about it, and I'm not, you know, putting a lot of thought into it. It's just what I'm working on at the moment. And... Uh, it's very meditative, is, I guess, my point, before I lose my train of thought. That's what I'm getting at. What I'm getting at is just the act of doing art is really good for your mind. In so many different ways. So from a peace of mind perspective, certainly good. And from a improving the way your brain thinks, it's very good. Like, just being able to think spatially, you know? Like, since I've been drawing pictures, I can't tell you how many times I go around and, like, it's kind of weird, but I, I walk around, you know, kind of like figuring out how I would draw somebody, right? So, like, I see some stranger at the grocery store, and I'm like, well, they have an interesting face. How would I draw that? And maybe a little weird. I don't know. Hopefully, I don't stare at them too long, but that's what crosses my mind. I'm like, you know, as, I, as I'm talking to a friend or something like that, I'm like, just want to draw your face. <laughs> it's funny. I don't know. Maybe it's not funny. Maybe it's weird. Maybe I need to work on that. But that's the uh, weird thoughts that cross my mind now that I've been drawing pictures is everybody I look at, I just want to figure out how would I tackle that face? Um, especially people with interesting faces, like older people, you know, they have like a lot of detail in their face. Uh, Earned through experience, and I, I look at it like, wow, that that might be a little bit challenging for me. How would I get all that detail into their face? <laughs> well, I'm just buying stuff at the grocery store. <laughs> like, do you want paper or plastic? Uh, no, I want to draw your face, and I can't figure out how I would do it. <laughs> Is that weird? Am I a weird person? Maybe. I don't care. Let's see. I think. Yeah, that's fine. I really need to lay on the white up here, though, because it's really white up here. One day I'm going to run out of white. This is like what I got in this stick. I've got another stick over here, but I've really been using this one a lot. I like it, though. It's nice and smooth. One of those uh, soft pastels I was talking about. And then, unfortunately, 
Looks like it's just making this a little bit muddy, but that's okay. I'll fix it up. So there's no like real hard edges here. I need to blend all this. And then if there is a hard edge, I feel like that would be done better with the pencils. <laughs> kind of like add some um some features to it or details or whatever. I don't want to blend out this lake too much because I need to see this one comes up and around. Oh, all this in between. God damn it. Get some dirt up in there. That's the kind of mistake that I would have like left in there. We got to come back and fix. There you go. All right, so his legs are a little blurry. I get it, but that's the way that they got to be. And then hopefully I can bring them back out. Because I got to get all these dirt spaces in between them. No, it's a pretty dog, pretty beach. All right, so I feel like at this point, I need some gray down at the bottom or something kind of darker to give it kind of a vignette. I don't know if that's the way to pronounce it, just kind of like fading down the shadows. So I do need to put back in some of that surf that has come up. And I don't want this to be so soft that there's no detail in it, so I have to add that. It's a good start. And then the dog would be reflected. I mean, it kind of looks like a reflected dog, or at least the start of one. So that's cool. Just something to remind me, remind me that um, there is a reflection there, but I'll work on it. So I want, I think, to add some other colors in here. Kind of curious what would happen if I blend in some green, maybe some of that blue. I don't want to go crazy with this green because that's like the type of thing that can like accidentally transform the picture, but when I look at this, I see green. So I'm going to try that just to give it not completely equal brown. That's fun. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of got like this. <laughs> that is fun, but it's like, I feel like I'm scratching a record, like I'm a DJ or something. I like that. All right. So I feel like that's a good start. <laughs> I keep saying that's a good start. We're already like an hour and 20 minutes into this. That's a good start. Yeah, I feel like I've earned some more, more bourbon. Um, let's see. Let me put some more blue up here. That's the other thing that's like super fun about art and why it's great for peace of mind. You know, like I, honestly, like if I had like an artistic point of view, 
it would be art as a mental exercise and art as self-improvement, right? Yeah, like some psychology shit. Um, because I do feel like there's so many benefits from practicing art that it really doesn't matter what you create. Like, um, here I'm doing a dog one day, I could be doing a wagon wheel tomorrow, and it's the same sort of thing and benefit that you get out of doing both. Just practicing art changes your mind. I know that that's kind of like a lofty statement, but it really does. It changes your way of thinking, your way of observing the world, um, your way of moving around in the world. And uh, it's all beneficial. There's no downside to it. There's no, like, I don't know, like cautionary tale that comes from. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe some people with, like, severe mental illness, they might focus on not being able to get a picture perfectly or something like that. I, I guess there might be a downside to, for some, but for most people, I would say there's no downsides to practicing art. You know, there's just, there's all upside. Don't worry, doggy. I'll come back to you. I'm just trying to get a sense of a beach in here. It's all pushing and pulling at the uh, the picture, adding a little here, taking away there. Very soft right now. I feel like I can give it some harder edges. I think. <laughs> hey, thanks, Robert. Appreciate that, man. You guys are why I do it. Well, you guys are the reason why I stream it. <laughs> I would probably still be doing it. So do you guys do anything for, um, what about you, Just Dave? Like, I'm sure St. Patrick's Day is really big over there, or maybe that's, like, a different part of England. I don't know. Like, I always thought it was, like, basically, like, a English-Irish holiday. Do you guys not practice it because you hate the Irish? <laughs> or, like, what's the deal there? Like, and he's like, yeah, see, see, I just solved another problem. The question was like, how do I get that nice transition? And if I add this like a little bit of white here, it's almost like a rip in the water. I feel like I need more of these like little sub spots. Anyway, I enjoy St. Patrick's Day. Um, I like the food. I like the beer. I like the songs. I love Celtic music, like Irish music and so on. If you love Irish movement, <laughs> I hear that. Um, all right, what, what color do I want to use for that? I feel like this might be a bit much, but I'm going to try it. So I kind of want to put in just kind of like like little riffs. I see these in the reference photo. I don't know if I can draw them, but I kind of want to like add a little bit of a boundary to that water's edge because the surf comes in and then it kind of fades out into the beach. But I do like that I added that green. That's pretty cool. Like you guys aren't probably looking at the reference picture as often as I am. But I like that. I think it's really cool. Like, I feel like if you're standing in a room, just Irish celebrate, really? Oh, that's a shame. You guys probably don't celebrate Oktoberfest either. I always make the joke, and I, I probably have already made it, but I'm going to make it again. I am, like, Irish for St. Patrick's Day, and then I'm German for Oktoberfest. So I have no problem appropriating other cultures if there's beer involved. 
it's not really my culture. I mean, I kind of probably have a little bit of Irish ancestry. But if there is any, I wouldn't really know enough to claim it. So I have to uh, I have to throw out the disclaimer. I'm borrowing other people's cultures. Like, definitely on the German side. Um, I think my mom's got some German in her. I think she's, like, French-German. Um, but again, I don't really have a claim to being like a German descendant or anything like that to where I can say, yeah, definitely Oktoberfest is my holiday. Um, yeah, Celtic music, Irish drinking songs, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. I love it. Yeah, they got the best um, drinking songs. Um, whiskey in the Jar. What are some of the other ones? That's the only one I can think of right now because I've been drinking. Whiskey in the Jar is great. I mean, to be honest, I can't even pronounce half the uh, Irish places. Like Killarney? I'm probably butchering that. Cork? Anyway, I just like celebrating uh, St. Patrick's Day. They have a Comic Con here. <laughs> this is this is like a nerdy story. So they they have a Comic Con here. They used to have it on the same weekend as St. Patrick's Day uh, Parade. So I always made the joke that I could dress up as Green Lantern, and then I could go to both the Comic Con and then go over to. Uh, St. Patrick's Day Festival without having to change outfits because <laughs> I'm dressed as Green Lantern at one place and I'm dressed as a leprechaun at the other. That is a really stupid story that I should not have told. <laughs> but it's true. Yeah, in case you guys didn't know, I'm a big nerd. I don't feel like that's a secret. I feel like that might be obvious. You're just telling people what they already know, Jeremy. What's your problem? No secret. Speaking of nerdy, you guys have the best TV shows over there as well. Uh, Doctor Who, Sherlock was awesome. British comedy is the best. Like, whenever they take a British... Um, comedy show and try to like translate it to uh, the United States, it's just not going to be as good. British comedy is the best in the world. Um, uh, one that I'm thinking of is uh, IT Crowd. So they tried to make that into a uh, show here in America. I forget who was in it, but the guy from, I don't even know the guy's name, so I'm not even going to try. But uh, it, it was just terrible. It, uh, the timing was off on the jokes. They they just weren't all that great. And it's just because British comedy is best made by British people. In my opinion. And if you guys don't think so over there, Doctor Who should be a national treasure. I only recently started watching the... Um, uh, that show Elementary here in the United States, just because I like the uh, I like Benedict Cumberbatch's Sherlock so much that I was resistant to watching uh, this show called Elementary here in the United States. That is also a modern Sherlock tale, but it's not that bad. I feel like I wasn't I wasn't fair to it. It's actually a pretty good show. But back when uh, they were doing the Sherlock series, that was my favorite TV show. Like I feel like the first couple of seasons were the strongest and then it got a little bit weaker over time but really that is that is a really good show and i don't think they're against making more of them i think that they're just like really busy with marvel movies both both benedict cumberbatch and martin freeman martin freeman was in um wakanda forever recently so they're just probably too busy i don't know how to make this reflection look perfect I don't know. I'm trying. I'm trying there. I'm doing my best. Don't give me a hard time when it's not perfect. 
I'm just I'm just an artist trying to learn. Don't be so critical. Trying to put in some hints of the dog here in the reflection. And then that's gotta be super smooth. And then super blended. Oh, that's really dark, but I'll lighten it up. I don't know how you make wet from a dry medium. Because right now it just kind of looks like a shadow rather than a reflection, but I don't know. I'll work on it. Ooh. Bit of a slice. Not supposed to be that dark. Well, how do we fix that? So we can come back over with some highlights of the ground. I feel like that helps. Yeah, actually, it looks darker on camera than it is in real life. I feel like that's always the case. Like that looks super dark on camera, but it's not. Whatever, I'll move on. Um, I'll just consider that something to tinker with later. How did that mark get there? All right, let's see, what damage can I do? All right, so I feel comfortable that at least it's, at least the entire picture is colored right now, right? So, like, I could stop the stream right now, put in details later and stuff like that. And you guys probably wouldn't see the details I would add anyway. So, it's, um, I feel like I've made that much progress. However, I don't feel like I'm ready to call it done. I'm going to go ahead and tackle some of the details because it is Friday night. I have nowhere to be. You guys can stop watching anytime you want. I'm comfortable to continue going. So, I'm going to go and do that after I drink some more bourbon. As long as the bourbon's in here, I will continue drawing. This show never ends. I'll do like one of those streams, like like candy stream or something, where it goes on for like five hours. The odd thing is, so like when I started drawing pictures. I didn't need to clean my hands a little bit. I got a lot of smudge on them. Um, when I started drawing pictures on YouTube, I was concerned that it was going to take long, longer than what I thought it would. Um, for some reason, I had in my mind that whenever I did a picture, it always took like six hours or at least five hours or something to even do like a simple sketch. And uh, I'm happy to see that that's not the case because that would be like an unbearable thing to watch for people. You'd have to watch it in bits and pieces. Let's see. There is kind of a, a ridge through here. Whoops. That's a bit much. Blend that out a bit. There's kind of a ridge that comes through here. And I think that's a little bit darker. So let me grab this other pencil. Let me put that in. And blend that out. This is a fun little picture, by the way. I'm enjoying it. It's kind of a landscape picture, even though it's really about a dog. Like, the dog's the central focus. Like, clearly, you see the dog. But it's really, like, there's so much going on in the background um, that I felt like if I get all that stuff in there, people can kind of get lost in the picture and just kind of wander around it. Or something. I'm gonna blend these stuff to kind of blend some of this stuff out instead of using my hands. Some of these smaller details. My even my thumb is too big, or my pinky finger. Why did I say thumb? Obviously, my thumb's too big. Um, even my pinky finger is too big for some of these. Kind of add a little bit of surf details. 
Why is this little white? White's good for kind of like covering up its face as well. Mm -hmm. So it gets rougher the more it goes back. I guess that's just because like, I don't know, the surf breaks at some point. And it kind of gets smoother through here. So back here, there would certainly be a lot more. I don't want to call it detail because it's not really detail. It's just more features like texture. There you go. That's the word. A lot more texture back here. Thank you, Jeremy, for coming up with that word. I have to refer to myself in third person. Endeavor. What's Endeavor about? I'm up for trying all kinds of new uh, things. Like, I don't really have a show hole right now just because, like, I haven't seen The Last of Us. So I feel like that's probably my next thing because, like, I feel like a lot of people are reporting good things about it. And um, there comes a point where you watch something just so that you don't, you don't have to suffer through, like, um, spoilers. Like, that's the reason why I actually watched the show Wednesday, because everybody was talking about it, and I'm like, dang it, by the time I get around to it, it's going to be all spoiled. I feel like that's most of my life, is I have to watch, like, when a Marvel movie comes out, because I love Marvel movies so much, I feel like I have to go see it that, the that weekend that it comes out, not because I'm super excited about it. It's actually sad that... Uh, Ant-Man is getting so much uh, flack because I actually enjoyed it and I was super excited about it. But anyway, my point is I have to go and see it when it comes out because some jerk on the internet is going to spoil it. You know, at some point somebody's going to say, oh, so-and-so did this or so-and-so did that. And I'm like, oh, thanks. I feel like I have to watch it now. So it looks like there are two highlights here. So I got one in. I don't know. Because like this this one here also comes down. And while we can skip it because we kind of make it our own. Because even though Just Dave has a reference photo, um, you know, who's to say that, you know, this isn't from a different day or something like that. Anyway, my point is. I do kind of want to stick with the reference photo because why not? You know, you have that up. You might as well. If you have a reference photo, you're not making this up out of your mind. Let's see. That's cool. I like that. And then a little bit of yellow. Here as well. Being a little All right. like these edges are all purple i don't know like maybe it's like the lens or something or just that's how it works in nature it seems like the edges of these yellows become purple thanks lorraine i think i wish i do need to move back to the doggo um so that's good now i promise to add some blue I don't think this is going to translate to camera. Maybe that's not a light enough blue. But he's got some blue in his coat. Um, and it's not really that he's got blue in his coat. It's not like he dyes his hair blue. Uh, it's that the light is reflecting off of his black coat. Get my reference picture back up at this. I keep forgetting to set the uh, the sleep on my computer to not not sleep. There you go. 
So yeah, yeah, it just looks black as midnight on um camera, but there is like a little bit of highlight here. If anything else, it's kind of blending in the black a little bit and um kind of giving it some highlights because <laughs> for so it's not all black it is reflecting the light. And what's great about it is it's allowing me to kind of blend this in a little bit. And even though no sane viewer would look at this and see and be like, oh, it's highlighting his rib cage. That's kind of what it's meant to be doing. Because these are like really slender dogs compared to my fat ass dogs. I'm sorry. I don't mean to give you a weight problem or like body issues. The dog's sleeping. The dog don't care. Yeah, it's a shame you can't see this on camera because it actually does look pretty nice. I mean, if nothing else, it, again, like I said, it's giving me the opportunity to kind of blend some of this stuff. So that it looks less grainy, kind of filling it out a little bit. That kind of look. All right, so now I don't know how I should do that. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, it's setting. Uh, all right. I wonder where I can find that. You think that would be on American Netflix, or do you think I'd have to go hunting for it? That seems like the type of show I would enjoy. I like a good mystery detective story. Hey, Christy, how's it going? Oh, well, I'm glad that it reminds me of another dog. Um, This one's a... uh. A greyhound. It's actually owned by uh, uh, Dave that's in the chat room. And uh, it's a beautiful little puppy. I guess it could look like a... could look like a retriever, maybe. Hey, you know what? I, what I tell people when they look at my art is... Um, Hey, whatever you see, that's fine with me. You see, uh, you see a retriever here. That means I drew a really good retriever. <laughs> I'll take it. It's better than drawing a really bad <laughs> greyhound. I'll take a a pretty good retriever over a pretty bad greyhound. All right, so I'm gonna use this gray. So like some of this stuff. I have to cheat on, right? So, like, you got some white legs, but they have, like, zero definition to them. And I feel like the only way to kind of give them definition is to kind of, like, outline them a little bit. And I know that's cheating, but it is what it is. Just because I need some hard edges here so that you know where the dog starts and the beach ends. Otherwise, I keep looking back at my reference art because I lost all my guidelines that I had put in here. And he's got like little tufts of like gray on his skin. Not skin, <laughs> on his fur. He's got little tufts of gray in his fur. So it's okay to use this gray, I think, to kind of put in some of that detail. Now, it's not going to be perfect if you're looking at it with the, like a magnifying glass or something like that. But the idea is this would be hanging on a wall or something. You'd be kind of like, you wouldn't be like nose level with it. You'd be standing at a reasonable distance from it, and it would give the illusion of detail in the fur. That's my thinking. That's my thinking. I don't know how successful that I am at that, but some gray going. So there's like, even though he's got white to his fur, there's no real white areas. It's just kind of more like gray and and 
and um, maybe some other colors in here. I don't know if I've got. I need like that kind of pink color, but I'm not going to risk it. I'm just going to go with gray. Oh, Endeavor? Yeah. If that's on Amazon Prime, I've got that. Maybe I'll add it to my queue. And as soon as I run out of uh, shows to watch, that'll be my next one. Because there ain't nothing worse than a show hole. Where you're watching all your stuff and you run out of things to watch. And you need something to fill it up. This is this is really a cool dog. I'm just gonna say it. Like this is a beautiful dog there, just Dave. I like it. It's a beautiful dog. And uh very it's very easy to look at and very easy to not easy to draw as in I feel like I'm getting it perfect. It's just very um very fun to draw. There you go. Hey, Trusted, how's it going? Oh, the final uh, series? Is that what they call it over there? They don't call them seasons. Did you get your uh, charcoals in the mail yet, Trusted? Have you tried them out? I know that you had ordered some. All right, now his tail is mostly white, but I'm going to go ahead and add some gray to it anyway. This is a monstrous tail. I mean, seriously, like, this is basically a seven-legged dog. So my dog likes to whip me with this tail, like, when I'm, I'm petting it or whatever, it'll, like, bat me in the face with this tail. Or if it's, like, doing doing something else, it'll, it'll, uh, it'll bat me. This one's like a whip. I wouldn't want this one to uh, bat me. Trying to get like a jawline in there. So I'm going to use my blender tool and see if I can blend some of this in, but I don't want it to be super soft. So I don't, I don't want to get crazy with the blending here. I want it to look a little bit sketched because it is fur you know even though i imagine yeah he's a short fur short fur sh short fur kind of dog i still kind of want it to look a little bit sketchy a little bit drawn i don't want it to look i mean <laughs> i don't think anybody's gonna look at this and be like oh that's a photo uh but i do want it to look drawn a little bit sketched So, where's my blend control? I need more to his collar because this collar is actually thicker than I drew it. <laughs> I gotta come around from the top here so that this is why I need an easel and maybe set up the camera at an angle so that I can not have to reach around. This is also why I started at the top of the picture. This is why I'm an awesome artist. I've got agility. Not just not just skill and talent. I've got agility. All right. So this is going to be tough because I got to get this. Well, all right. I'm I'm going to leave well enough alone. Yeah, I'll tell you what the problem is. The problem is and I I it's not like I I can't do digital art, but I I don't want to do digital art. I like the tactileness of um uh, traditional art as they call it um but i'll tell you what is nice about digital art digital art if you make a mistake you can just control z it you just undo it and you can't do that with traditional art once you put a line down you're either going to erase it or you're going to roll with it and most times i just roll with it but there's no control z in traditional art so I have to say I'm a better artist than those digital wannabes out there. 
Oh, Chris, you can critique. I mean, that's part of the fun. Uh, I'll critique right along with you. There's, um, if, if you want to, I'm not saying you were critiquing, but if you wanted to critique, it does not bother me at all. I know that there's room for improvement. Um, so that, that, that does not bother me at all. Um, so I had a charcoal pencil in there. I think I had a straight edge on it. Yeah. So that's kind of been carved to a fine point with all the charcoal pictures I've been doing. So I'm going to use this to do the mouth just because I feel like that'll give me this little doggy mouth in there. Uh, anyway, Chrissy, uh, I, I didn't take it as criticism and I hope you don't feel like um, I took it the wrong way. But if you wanted to criticize, honestly, I think it would be... Uh, well, I know it would be fine, but I think it would be funny. Uh, one person came in and was like, eh, okay, on one of my pictures. And I thought that was the funniest comment. Like, the guy actually took the time to say, meh. Meh. Rather than just moving on, he's like, meh. I get some funny comments. Like, um, maybe I'll do a show where I'm just reading off some of the comments that I get they they are pretty funny especially so the shorts I feel like I have two different viewerships I have the people who watch these uh, streams and then I have people who watch the shorts and they're totally different because the, the shorts are like 30 seconds so people are watching those and then kind of scrolling on to the next one and so on um, totally different viewership than the people who spend like a, an hour or two watching me uh, paint something in real time my point is, I think the shorts viewers often skew on a uh, younger scale, and some of the comments they drop are just hilarious. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but I'm going to look some up, and um, I'm going to share some of the best, because they are funny as hell. Uh, one of the one of the good comments I think is um, uh, on one of my horse pictures. Uh, I did one of those chaoses and then drawing the face out of the chaos, and um, somebody was like, "Dude, you just materialized a horse out of nothing. That's awesome." I'm like, for some reason in my head, it was like um, read as Keanu Reeves from uh, uh, Point Break or something, or like a uh, Bill and Ted. Anyway, point is, uh, I, I love that comment. That was that was a, one of the best comments. Like that's the kind of shit I'll print out and like hang on the wall or something. That's funny. Hey, honeybee, how's it going? Thank you for hanging out with me on this Friday night. I hope you guys are looking forward to the weekend. Hope you guys had a decent week. Uh, this is great. Yeah. All right. So I need to put in some schnauzer features. Schnauz. And then he's got a little bit of brown in his face as well. Like just a touch. And I don't know if I have the right brown to put that in, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try it's almost like an orangish brown. I'm going to try adding some orange and then come back over it with brown. It's funny because I have the owner here in the chat. I can ask him questions like, is that orange? Is that brown? What's going on there? But I'm not going to because I'm going to apply art to it. I feel like he has a little bit of white above his left eye. And I don't know how to get that in there. Maybe I can back up this little white. Yeah. Oh, shit. Ah. Easier than I thought. All right. I don't know how to get detail in his eye when his eye is so small, but I'm going to try because I do have a, like a sharp edge on this little block. So I got that in there, and then I think I'm going to come back over that. Anyway, 
It's just a suggestion of an eye. And then we've got a little bit of white in this kind of ear. Oh, thank you uh, on the castle drawing. Um, yeah, it, that one was a lot of fun because I felt like, um, you know, like here I'm drawing a picture from a reference and um, it's pretty straightforward. You know, there's a dog in it, there's a beach and so on. And while I feel like I can take some uh, liberties with it, um, it's still kind of based in reality. What's cool about that that castle picture is uh, I was making it up, you know. It was my interpretation of that uh, Force Fin chest, which, uh, you know, everybody's familiar with. So everybody already has their preconceived ideas of um, what that chest is and what it looks like and stuff. But I took... I took the stuff on it and I kind of gave it my own little um, twist. And I, that was fun for me. That was, um, if this show is about creativity, that was, uh, that was definitely a creative highlight. I enjoyed it. So I'm, gl I'm glad you liked that. <laughs> well, thank you, Christy. I appreciate that. I actually like this dog. I think um, there might be some additional things I can add to it. Some of it don't translate as well to uh, camera, but I do feel like I got some details in here, which again, surprising to me because it's such a small area of the actual picture. There's not a lot to work with here. And that's my own fault. It, it, this is, was, um, it was a layout choice that I went with. And uh, in hindsight, I could probably made it easier on myself by either not doing it this small, like making the dog more prominent, on the beach and or just using a bigger piece of paper and i feel like i have bigger piece of paper like i've got i've got 12 by 18 i really should use that paper instead but i'm committed to it now i already did it all right so i'm happy with the dog i am not happy with how the dog is kind of disembodied at this point so i'm going to put in some shadows again these are Kind of like a reflection. I'm going to try to do this like Bob Ross style where you pull it down. Or at least what I remember from Bob Ross. Pull it down and then you kind of like. Swish it across. I don't know if that's any better, but at least it's not like disembodied. He's not like floating on the background. He's actually part of the background now. So that's cool. I'm happy with that. And then, you know, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I'm using the smudge stick. So after a while, after you've smudged a bunch of dark areas, you can kind of use the smudge stick as kind of like a light gray because it's got all that black on it. And it gives you like this really soft um, look. There were some paw prints over here. I kind of want to smudge those in. Little doggo paw, paw prints. All right, so I'm kind of happy with that. I'm going to go back to the clouds. Because I feel like I've earned some, uh, some time to work on the clouds. Let's see, what time is it? All right, it's been two hours. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop this at two hours and 30 minutes. Just because I don't feel like it's fair to you guys make you watch um everything i do like i may come back and add more detail and so on so that i'm comfortable with it but you guys don't need to sit around and watching all of that so i'm gonna i'm gonna do a hard stop at uh like two hours and 30 minutes which is in an, in a half hour plus i don't even know what time it is and some of your guys' areas. I don't feel like it's fair that just because I'm insane and I'll stay up all night working on this, it's not it's not really fair to you guys. Because you guys just want to see the finished product. Which I, I always end up posting to the um, community tab when it's done. Like, I worked on a dog the other day in charcoal but i i wanted to add some brown to it so i haven't posted that one because i'm not done with it 
I do like doing clouds and cats though. Clouds are cool. Because pastels are easy to make soft, and that's all clouds are. You know, it's I feel like this side looks good. This side still needs some work, I think. Okay, so that line is fine. I like. By the way, I've been making a mess lately. You can see that my board is kind of stained from all the charcoal I've been working on. Funny. So there's another rift back here. So that kind of gives a little bit of visual interest. Uh, what other damage can I do? I think it's going to be really hard to put the suds down here, so I'm going to put, I'm not I'm not going to worry about that so much. At this point, I kind of want to have a little bit of fun, I guess. What color is this? So there is I wish I had like some blues in this uh this soft pastel stuff. These are uh these are a lot of fun. white up here. And do I have another soft one? I wish I had soft ones. Oh well, I'll go back to this. more busyness up here than there is down at the bottom, so. Let's move that out a little bit, but not too much. And then Intermittently, there's some busyness over here in this color, so I'm just going to suggest that there's water over there. I don't know. Like, I don't do a lot of landscapes in pastel, so it's hard to judge whether or not this is good compared to other ones that I've done because I don't do a lot of them. I give myself, I don't know, maybe a C for effort on this. I feel like there's a lot more purple up in there, so I'm gonna to try to put more purple in. Do I have purple in, nope, I don't have the right kind of purple. It's, it's not really purple, it's, it's more like a violet. So I'm just going to scribble in some violet through here just because I, that's what I see. You know, I see a lot of violet. And I haven't really put in a lot of violet just because it's hard to use these pencils to do that. But that's my own laziness. Sharpen that so now I have more room to play. I do like these pencils. 
They weren't that expensive. These pencils were only like $15. Which, compared to the color pencils I bought, not that bad. But they are very hard, and that's disappointing because I was expecting them to be much softer, and they're just not. So, they're hard to use over other layers and so on. They're great for this kind of stuff, but we're coming back and adding details to something that has like a lot of stuff to it already. They're not really built for that. I feel like I, I could get some softer ones to help with that kind of jazz. Yeah, so the thing is, you can use a pencil sharpener like this, but you're not really supposed to. Um, if you look at my charcoal pencil, basically I've got a pocket knife over here, and I, I use that to whittle those. So that's the secret to sharpening these pencils. Um, they're not really designed for traditional pencil sharpeners. Yeah, I think that looks okay. I'm gonna make sure the dog doesn't have like a halo effect on him just because I've been afraid to like draw over him. I think it's fine. I mean, as far as the pastel picture, I'm happy with most of this. I feel like some of the other areas could use some improvement. So with my limited palette of pencils, or like, not pencils, pastels and colors and so on, I'm not unhappy with this. I think it's okay. This is reflecting a lot of yellow, so I'm going to put more up here, even though it's not necessarily in the reference picture, it's kind of in the reference picture. I'm going to put more fire in the sky, so to speak. What did I use there? Was that this? Yeah. Orange and purple really look good together. in here. Yeah, so you basically have to whittle those um uh trust in. I mean you don't have to, but it, they they're not really designed. Another way to sharpen them is that depending on the kind of like charcoal you use, uh if you're using a charcoal stick instead of a pencil, like um, I don't have any in front of me, but you can use a piece of sandpaper to kind of bring that to a point so that you can use uh, use it for like finer details. Um, I don't think you can do that with a pencil because it's wrapped in wood, but if you just have a charcoal stick, you can definitely just uh, use sandpaper, just rub it across the sandpaper. And then the benefit of that is you actually get charcoal powder out of that, which you can also use as like um, one of your little tools in the arsenal. I'm going to start doing that myself and start using um, 
charcoal powder, if I remember to. And um, that's just a, a nice little extra thing that you can add to your tool belt. Clean up some of this. Sorry, my mind just went wandering. I'm like, I have some ice cream in the fridge. I'm going to have some ice cream after this. All right, I feel like I'm happy with this up here, even though it's like it looks a little smudgy on camera. I like it in real life. Um, not all of it. But um, I'm not happy with this yet. So I think I'm going to tinker with that just a little bit more. How much time do I have? I've got like 15 minutes left before I'm going to call this done. And, um, you know, maybe tinker with it a little bit off camera. I'm mostly happy with this up here. It's not perfect, but it's it, it's got all the nice suggestions that I wanted it to have. I don't want to be like like a cop out and say, "Well, it's the best I can do," you know. But truthfully, it is the best I can do. Let's. You know, maybe future Jeremy can do a little bit better, but I just, I like that. Okay, so what is missing here? Why does this not look right? It's tough because the water comes up on the beach, you know, so... I want to make sure I don't cover up the dog. The water comes up on the beach, so there's not really a separation. But I think if I can make the sand a little bit bluer, I might be happy with that. And maybe give it some texture. It's funny, towards the end, I started doing this like quick, rough work and stuff, and Sometimes it helps, and then sometimes it just kind of screws things up. Mostly I'm happy with that. I need this one. Like, you would think, like, all that care I've been doing why is he going back and roughly doing this? It's just because, like, I don't know. I feel like I'm more comfortable with the picture and the how the picture is going. I'm in these like kind of like broad areas here. I'm I'm not worried about messing it up so much. Plus, it's a piece of art, you know. How can you really mess it up? Let me get a blending stick so that I don't use my fat fingers up in here against the dog. Yeah, so there's um there's stuff called fix it. Um, so if you want to save some money, you can just use hairspray. People talk about that. Uh, but there's also something called fix it, which it comes in two varieties. So you have what's called, um, a workable fix it. And I just picked this up at like, um, Michael's crafts or Hobby Lobby, maybe. Um, so workable fix it allows you to continue working with it. So if I sprayed this down with workable fix it, I can come back over it and add more layers. And then there's other stuff. I'm going to show this, but I'm not happy with it. So this is like a matte finish. It's like, um, um, it even said that it works with charcoal and so on. But what I don't like about this is that it ends up changing the color. Like it makes it more dark. It's funny that I just had these sitting by the side. Um, 
but it makes it end up looking more dark. And I, I did, I don't like it. There is some that um, I would do your research. I don't have any off the top of my head. Obviously, I'm still trying to find one that I'm happy with. Uh, but that's what you're looking for. You're looking for a fixant that's not going to darken your picture or change the colors of it or anything like that. But that's that's the word, uh, fixant. And um, I recommend the workable fixant um, just because like sometimes, like I may want to spray this down with the workable fixant and come back and add more layers to it. So what, um, what you'll come to find uh, working with pastels or charcoal is that the teeth of the paper um, is really what causes these things to uh, to kind of stick to the paper. It's going into the grain of the paper. Now, this is a pretty heavy grain paper. Uh, I'm actually using a cold press water a color paper. Um, and, you know, like they, there's a lot of variety you can use in, in paper. I, I don't want to get bogged in the weeds, but um, you may find that uh, on a smoother paper, you're kind of filling up those edges with chalk or um, or charcoal. And the problem with that is that once you fill it up, you know, everything that you add to it is just going to kind of flake off if you don't use that fixant. That workable fixant kind of gives it more tooth um, so that you're, um, you're able to come back and actually uh, add more layers upon it. So that's just like a quick kind of dive into the that kind of stuff, but that's what you're looking for. It's called fixing. And um, before I send this off to just Dave, like when I'm all done with it and I'm happy with it, which may or may not be tonight, I don't know. I'm going to sit with it overnight and see if there's anything else I want to add to it. Um, I am going to have to spray it down because he lives in uh, the UK and it has to go over there. The stuff on my wall back there, I don't bother with it. I just hang it up like maybe one or two of those pictures that I've used fix it on. But certainly if I'm going to mail it out, like um, there was that one lady I did her dog for because her dog passed away. I actually mailed that to her. And that's why I have this fix in over here. I bought it just for that. Usually I don't use it all that often, but certainly if you want to um, send it by mail to somebody or something like that, you're going to, you're going to have to invest in some. So yeah, short little primer on fix it. Don't know. I think I think I do want some suds down here, but I just don't know how to draw them. <laughs> Can add all this white down, but I don't I don't know if that looks like suds. I feel like it needs a shadow to it in order to be convincing. Is I don't know if suds is the right word, but I'm gonna call it suds. I can add these in. So they don't look believable until I add a line, but I've added the lines and I'm still not happy with them. I basically covered up all the ones that I did put in. All right, let's try it one more time. It's not gonna have, I have yeah, I have nine minutes. All right, so I'm gonna spend this nine minutes trying to put suds in. <laughs> We're gonna end Friday on a sud note. And, you know, it doesn't have to be super detailed. Like, I'm actually liking that. It doesn't have to be super detailed. It's background. It's just noise. But I do feel like I need to come back with some uh, shadow to it in order to uh, make it right. Yeah, so the, the matte finish. So, like, this Krylon matte finish stuff that I got, I, I just picked that up at Walmart because it said it worked with charcoal. Um, but when I got home and I did a piece with it, I, I wasn't very happy with it. It kind of, I guess you can plan in advance to know it's going to darken your picture and just kind of like plan ahead. But I, I wasn't happy how dark it made my picture. Certainly, um, here, I, I actually have an example. Um, where's this guy? So this guy, sorry, this guy. It looks better now because I added some white over it. But when I, I sprayed this guy, so like I sprayed him down. There's no charcoal. I sprayed him down because I wanted to frame him. 
and he looks a lot darker than when I first drew him. Now I came back and added some white highlights, uh, and I'm I'm actually because he's a brown dog and not straight up black. I'm at, I'm planning on adding some uh, brown to it, so it's not sealed yet. I'm planning to, but I wasn't. I I used that matte finish on it, and I'm not happy with it. I feel like. I feel like it was not, it didn't work as advertised. So like Krylon, if you're watching this video, I have complaints. <laughs> there are some, um, there are some ones out there that people have recommended that I'm thinking about trying non aerosol ones, non uh, odorless ones so that I can use it while here in my office. That's another concern. I have to go outside to do it because it's like it stinks. So that's what I'm going to try next. I'm going to try um, odorless uh, fixant that supposedly doesn't change color, change your colors. And, uh, you know, if I like it, I'll, I'll definitely report back and let you guys know. Hey, you know what, manufacturers? I know I don't have a lot of subscribers, but if you want free, send me something free to test out, I'm happy to test it out because I'm not happy with the options that I've had so far. Send me something, I'll give it an honest review. I don't mind. Um, that's like an open invitation, by the way. If you want me to try your art supplies, I don't know why I'm saying this because I don't have the subscribers where they're even paying attention. But if you're out there and you want to send me free art supplies to test out, I am up for that. I'll give you an honest review. And... Um, Clearly, there's people who watch this show who, who have questions like that, so we're your audience. Send us free stuff to test out. I'm a lot happier with that, actually. Um, let's see. In the next five minutes, I'm going to test adding like little bits of shadow to these bubbles. Let's see if Maybe if I just take my time with them. See, that just stands out way more than I wanted it to. Yeah, I think this this beach is going to need a little bit of work before I'm happy with it. I don't know how Jeff Spade is feeling about it. He probably fell asleep. I think it's pretty late over there in the UK. But, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm using this, like, blue. I guess that's not too bad. Looking at it on camera, it's not that bad. Anyway, it's actually my hope that um, as this uh, channel progresses, I might get the opportunity to review products. Right now, I only have a few products myself. I can highly recommend the Prismacolor colored pencils. I love those things. Um, I like the Derwent pencils I've been using. Those are things I can recommend. Um, as far as the paper goes, I've just been buying cheap generic, uh, mostly watercolor pa paper for these... Uh, pastel pictures because they have like a pretty good tooth on it oh you're awake cool um yeah i i think it needs like a little bit of work but i'm gonna work on it um off camera and uh we'll get there i i think the dog is looking good though the dog looks like the picture um i'll send you a photo of it uh when i'm done just dave and you can kind of evaluate it anywho as far as products go, there are some that I can recommend just because I've used them and I like them. Those Rembrandt pastels, excellent. If you get a chance to get some Rembrandt pastels, I don't know what they cost. Like I said, I got them for a Christmas gift. Um, I imagine they cost more than you know these like these ones here that I've been using today. I've only been using these because they're like nice and hard, and um, I don't. I have a limited set. Of the Rembrandt pen pencils, they're mostly for portraits, so they're all like earth tones. So I don't have any like blues or whatever. But yeah, I can definitely recommend those as pastels. Um, the charcoal, I think I've been using like like I've uh, I mentioned when you asked, um, trusted. Uh, I think I've been using the Generals uh, charcoal. I like them. 
So, but I don't really have any experience with other charcoals to be, to have anything to compare them to. So it's not like I can say, oh, I really like these compared to other ones. Um, since I'm using different pastels, I can definitely say I like different pastels. Um, I would really like to get into oil pastels um, as an alternative to this chalky stuff. Uh, I want to create a portrait with oil pastels. Uh, the ones I picked up from Walmart, they were only five bucks, and the best I can say about them is that they're one step up from crayons. Uh, they're not all that great. Um, but I see other people using these like soft uh, oil pastels, and I'm like, well, there's got to be something in the product because those definitely are laying down a lot differently than what I bought, like these cheap student pastels. So um, if there's any company out there that wants to send me some nice soft oil pastels, I'll, I'll definitely try them. I'll make beautiful artwork with them and sing your praises. But right now I'm on a budget. I can't go out and spend $100 on oil pastels. I can't justify it. Or whatever they cost. I don't even know what they cost. Maybe they're cheap. All right. Well, this is a good start. I think that this is a good stopping place. Like I said, I wanted to go... Um, well, I wanted to go less. I wanted to kind of keep it around two hours, but we ran into two hours and 30 minutes. I think that's fine. Um, what I'm looking at on my desk looks a little bit smoother than what you see in the picture, but there is some texture to it. I just think that, like, some of it gets uh, washed out on camera, per usual. You know, it's... I would like to, if somebody wants to send me a $700 camera so that I can improve my artwork on camera, that'd be great. Um, anyway, I'm complaining tonight. But um, uh, I feel like it's at a good stopping point. I still have some bourbon left, so I'm going to work on that. But looking at it, the only things that, um, let me go back to the reference picture. So as you can see, this is a very vibrant picture. And if you look at the bottom, that reflection down there, and just uh, that it being darker and stuff, I don't have the colors to make it look exactly like this, but I feel like this is a good approximation to it. There, there needs to be some work, and I'm not very happy with the, uh, the bottom part here. I don't feel like it looks like the reference at all. Hey, thanks, Vertigo. I appreciate it. Um, I don't think this bottom part looks like the reference at all. This is kind of like, well, it's pastel-y. Um, but it is the limited palette that I've got when it comes to blues. So I'm not going to beat myself up over that. I might add a little bit of darker blue up here and stuff just to kind of like make it kind of fade off into like gradients, right? Um, uh, I might work on that. I don't know what I'm going to do about this bottom. I'm kind of liking this as like a color to bring all the way across i might do that and then come back with some highlights as far as the uh reflection i think that that's a good bold choice um i don't remember how i did that though i think it was just black in there mixed in with the browns um that's ah, great i'm gonna do it famous last words let me see what happens when i just kind of darken this up see if i feel better about it This is where I, I, I should have just called it done. Should have just called it done. Hey, I appreciate that you guys, uh, look, no need to thank me. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. I'd be doing this on my own, you know? So, like, I appreciate you guys coming in and hanging out with me so that I'm not just sitting here lonely creating um, artwork. I do that sometimes during the week, and I enjoy it and stuff, but these... Uh, these live streams are so much fun for me because like I get to explain what I'm doing and I guess I could do that in a video and stuff like that. But then I'd be talking to myself here. I feel like I'm actually talking to somebody and that, that helps me. Um, it's it's kind of like, a, I don't know. It's, it's kind of like an introvert. It, it helps to have somebody to express <laughs> express talk i can't even talk um express words with uh that helps me uh get over the introvertness uh when i'm believe it or not like some people have trouble talking in front of crowds i do better talking in front of a crowd than i do talking to myself i feel so awkward talking to myself on camera um that i appreciate you guys hanging out with me so i like that as a good start i felt obviously i need to add to it but um i feel like that's a good start i'm gonna come back add add some more to it work on that a little bit off camera 
Um, eventually, I'll get around to taking a picture of this and posting it up when I feel comfortable with uh, the way it looks. And then we'll send it off to Jeff's Dave. Maybe he can hang it up on the wall and share a picture with us. Um, I do like that. Like, uh, I've sent some pictures out to people and they, uh, they let me know that they received it. And, um, this one lady framed hers and stuff and hung it up on the wall. And I, I love things like that. It's like, uh, I don't know, just seeing your stuff out in the wild is kind of cool. All right. Obviously that needs a little bit more work. So I'll, I'll work on that later. Anyway, I think this is a good stopping point. Um, I've got gunk all over my hands. This is kind of neat. Let me see if I can show that. This is, you should see it when I do the charcoal. Uh, I'm like, like all black hands. The first thing I do is I go and wash my hands afterwards. But anyway, so this is a good start of this picture. Um, sorry, I couldn't get it done. Sometimes it takes that long. Um, the castle picture, like I said, took six hours. Imagine you know, if you guys had to wait through all that. Um, but we're going to call this one done. So again, Thank you very much for hanging out with me on a uh, Friday night. I'm going to let the dog goes out. You can see she, she knows what time it is. Uh, this is my, my dog, uh, Bear. Yeah. She's like, why don't you do a picture of me? Why don't you do a picture of me? Anyway. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys have a good weekend. If there are St. Patrick's Day celebrations in your area, hopefully, hopefully you guys can get to go out and enjoy that uh, like I will be. Um, if not, I'll have a, a pint of Guinness for you. So anyway, I'm going to call this uh, done. Uh, I'll see you guys eh, maybe next Monday, maybe later in the week. I don't know, depending on the schedule. But until then, have a good one. Bye.